glory. That's good stuff. Oh, I long for that day. I pray for that day. I strive to envision that day when I walk in heaven on streets of gold where angels have trod. Woo, I'm going. You want to go with me? Well, I can tell you how if you don't know. <laughs> and if you don't know, I will tell you how from God's Word this morning. If you have your Bibles, will you take them and open them to the book of Genesis? If you do not have a Bible, there's one on the pew rack in front of you. Genesis chapter 22. We're going to look at four little old verses today, verse 15 through 19. So we should be finished in about an hour, hour and a half. Um, for those who are visiting, I'm just kidding. It'll be about two hours. Genesis 22, 15 through 19. The message is entitled, Obedience Brings Blessing. You'll notice we stand in reverence and honor of the Word of God if you can, and I appreciate you doing that. Notice what the Word of God said. Genesis chapter 22, verse 15. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heavens in the second time and said, Beside, uh, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in uh, blessings I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand of the, uh, which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemy. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto the, uh, his young men, and they arose up and went back uh, together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelled at Beersheba. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you that there is a place for the believer. There's a place for us here on earth. There's a greater place called heaven, a place that eye hath not seen, neither has ear heard, neither has it entered to the heart of man what heaven is, what you have prepared for us. But God, we know it's the new Jerusalem. And we know even as we study today about obedience brings blessing, obedience doesn't bring salvation. Obedience comes from salvation. Salvation is a free gift. It's an offer to mankind to be saved. And we would pray that you would distinguish the two as we study about the fact that obedience does bring blessings, though. Not only blessings here on earth, but a blessing that is out of this world, being in heaven's glory with our Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Father, would you open the eyes of our hearts this morning? Would you help us to focus upon the truth of your word? Would you bring us closer to you? We ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for reverencing the Word of God. Would you be seated? Obedience brings blessing. Well, if we digress back to last Sunday, we, we saw where uh, Abraham was told by God to go to the Mount Moriah area. And when he did, he took Isaac, his son, and, and he took some wood for a burnt offering and, and to build the altar, if you would. And he took two uh, men with him to help carry things. And when he got to the base of the mountain range of Mount Moriah, and they went up, uh, him and Isaac went up on the mountain. He put the wood on Isaac's back. And they went up to this mountain and, and looking for us uh, to sacrifice unto the Lord is what Abraham had told Isaac they were going to do. And of course, Isaac asked the question, well, Dad, or pops, where's, the, where's this uh, sacrificial animal we're supposed to use? And Abraham says, God will provide. And of course, when they got up there, Abraham made the altar out of the, the wood there off of Isaac's back, and he took Isaac and he bound him, and he put him on the, the, uh, the wood to be burnt as a burnt offering. And uh, just about time, he was going to kill him first with a, with a saber or with a dagger, a, a knife. The angel of the Lord cried out to Abraham and said, don't do it. Abraham, Abraham, he said, don't do this. He said, God's provided for you a sacrifice. And of course, there was a ram in a thicket. And uh, he went and got the ram and he, he used the ram as a sacrifice unto God. And then him and Isaac come down off the mount. And that's where we are in the scriptures this morning. But God says something really neat to Abraham. And he speaks to him about obedience brings blessings. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heavens a second time. And he said, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. The significance of that is that God doesn't swear except by himself. Why? Because there's no higher authority than one can swear by. And uh, it's, it's okay if the baby's crying. They can't out-preach me, I promise you. You want me to hold her? <laughs> I have held babies and preached, by the way, so it makes no... It does... My sermons put them to sleep, okay? 
They just go right out so they'll be all right. But anyway, back to where we were. God swears by himself because there's no greater authority. As a matter of fact, even in our own judicial system, when we go to court, we swear by God. I swear uh, to God to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me, God. So there's no greater one to swear by. So he swears by himself, and he says unto Abraham, Because you have done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. Now, once again, for those who are visiting this morning, uh, last week we understood that I, uh, Abraham had two sons. He had Ishmael a son that he had by Hagar, uh, Sarah's bond woman, bond servant, bond maid, and, and uh, he had sent them away. But he had one son that was natural son by, by Abraham and by Sarah, and that was their son Isaac. So this is where the lineage would continue on. This is his seed, if you would. And, and uh, so that's why he says, my son, thy only son. And because he didn't withhold Isaac, he was willing to kill the most precious thing to him. Remember now, him and Sarah didn't have any other children. Because he was willing to sacrifice Isaac, God said unto him, because you didn't withhold your son, in the, in, that in blessings I will bless thee, and multiplying I will multiply thee, as, as thy seed is the stars of the heavens, and the, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess in the gates of thine enemies. And in all thy seed, uh, all the nations shall be blessed, because you hath obeyed my voice." Not for any other reason, not because he had longevity of life, not because that he traveled when God told him to travel, not because he had money and wealth, which in fact he did, but simply because he obeyed the very voice of God and was willing to do whatever it took to please and to honor God. God said, I'm going to bless you. You see, obedience brings blessings. Now, if Abraham would have said, God, this ain't happening. I'm not going to sacrifice my son. I just got one now. You already told me because of Sarah to run the other one off, and he's gone, and I don't know what's happening with him, and, and, and now I don't have but one child, and Sarah being 90-something year old, and me being over 100 years old, and, and uh, we're probably not going to have any more children. Uh, God, I, I'm not going to give up Isaac for you like this. I'll give up all my slaves for you. I'll give up all my servants. I'll give up all my helpers. I'll even give up my brother-in-law, and I'll especially give up my mother-in-law. Oh, that's a different translation. I'm sorry, that, that's not in there. But I'm sure that he would say he'd give up anything else but his son. But God says, because you were willing to do it, to give up the most precious possession of your heart, I'm going to bless you. Now, God has already told Abraham many times over that he was going to make him a great nation, that he was going to multiply him as the stars of the heaven and the sands of the seas. Uh, and now he says, even to the seed uh, shall possess the gates of the enemy. Now, notice it said the word seed there. He didn't tell Abraham, you're going to possess your enemies. He said, your son is going to possess your enemies. He's going to be the ruler. You're already ancient of age, and you're not going to live a whole lot longer. And, and through Isaac, and then through Isaac will come Esau and Jacob. And, and through all of this will, will the lineage continue on. But I'm going to bless thee. And in thy seed shall all the nation of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. God tells Abraham all of this, and then he comes down off of the mount, and he gets with those two men that he had, and they rose up and they go back to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelled there in Beersheba. Now, that was probably one of the greatest Christ, uh, typologies of Christ we've seen in the Scriptures, uh, the first major sacrifice of someone. But Isaac's sacrifice wasn't to be sacrificed for a man's sins. His sacrifice was to be a sacrifice of willingness and obedience of his father Abraham. He was willing to do that, willing to obey. And by obeying God, he was blessed to where it was an absolute fact, unequivocally, that his, his lineage shall continue on and on and on, even until this day, probably almost 7,000 years later, still the Israelites, the Jews, call Abraham father. Still to this day. Well, the message is very plain this morning as far as what we see in the Scripture. God blessed Abraham because he was obedient. The application is that God will bless us if we are obedient. Disobedience brings problems. It brings difficulties. Obedience brings blessings, does it not? No matter what you're doing in life, whether it be uh, life in general or it be in your Christian walk, obedience will bring blessings. You disobey your parents, I'm sure they reward you with silver and gold. Every time you get sassy and, and uppity with your parents, I'm sure they say, oh, I want more of it. Or does it bring discomfort and problems and difficulties? 
But when you do what your parents tell you to do, when you are obedient to your parents, and I'll share a scripture with you, especially the youth here today, about obeying parents, what it has for your life. But uh, it brings blessings when you're, when you're obedient. But you know, even in life, being obedient brings blessings. Being disobedient brings difficulty. I heard the story of a man, an, an older gentleman, who was taking his grandchildren to school. And he would come to the stop sign. Instead of stopping, he would just continue right on through after looking both ways and go in front of school and let the grandkids off. Well, after a couple of days, this police officer was watching him do that. And the police officer saw him not stop at that stop sign, but roll right on through it day after day. Well, about the third day, the police officer wheeled in behind him, cut the blue light on, and went up and said, Sir, I have been watching you, and you have been bringing your grandkids to school, and everybody knew everybody in the community. He says, But you are breaking the law. You are disobeying the law. You are running that stop sign. And the older gentleman says, says Nah. I look both ways. Everybody knows everyone here. The sign, you can just slow down and go through it. There's no really need to stop. I'm not affecting anyone. And the police officer says the word stop means to stop. And he asked the older man to get out the car, which he did. And the old man says, no, it doesn't. It means just slow down and pay attention. Make, make sure you're safe, but it doesn't necessarily mean stop. You don't have to stop. And the police officer said, well, let me demonstrate something to you. So the police officer pulled out his flashlight and started beating the old man upside the head and said, would you like me to stop or would you like me to slow down? It makes a difference, right? Well, it does in the scriptures also. The Bible tells us in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5, Now therefore, it, God says, If you obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Now God is speaking to the, to the Hebrews there, to the Israelites, but in application we can see that to us, that if we obey the voice of God and keep his covenant, then we are a treasure to him. He treasures us. Just like we do as, chil uh, as parents and children. When our children are obedient, we love them. And, not, and when they're disobedient, we still love them. We just don't like what they do. And we don't claim them anymore. It's true even in our families. Now, for those of you children, you may not understand this, but you'll hear this in life and probably see it. And if God grants you the privilege of having children, it will come back to you fourfold. And you will understand that as you are married and your children disobey, especially as a man, your wife will say, that is his kids. It's no longer our kids. It's our kids when they do right. It's his kids when they do bad. Brother David, who just had a baby, that's what you're facing. But if we obey the voice of God and we keep his commandments, he treasures that. And we treasure that in life as parents when our children do right. God is the heavenly father, so he treasures it when his children does right. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26 through 28, the Bible says, Behold, I have set before thee a, uh, this day a blessing and a curse. And God says, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, uh, which I command you this day, and a curse if you obey not the commandments of your Lord your God. See, God's word says if we obey his commandments, there's a blessing in it. If we disobey his commandments, there's, there's a curse to it. There's difficulties. There's problems. It's amazing how in our life today we've got to the point that we want to water down the word of God and we want to take out the thou shalt nots. When, that God, when the God, God's word says thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not uh, do these other things, you know what he means? Thou shalt not. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, no moving it around a little bit to, to meet the need that you may have. It is absolutely what God's word says. In Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 10, it says, Thou shalt obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you this day. And friends, his commandments are just as pertinent and just as real today as they were when they were written way back then. Why? Because God doesn't change and his word doesn't change. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 20, the Bible says that thou shalt love the Lord thy God and that thou may obey his voice and that thou cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days and thou may dwellest in the land which the Lord swear unto the fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. Friends, you have longevity or get longevity when you obey God. Well, you may say, well, pastor, that's not, that's not true. We know teenagers that die. We know children that die who, who are Christians. Well, friends, they live eternally. Amen. They just change addresses. They don't necessarily live here anymore. They live in heaven's glory forever and ever. 
and they live in sweet fellowship with the King of glory, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jeremiah chapter, 20, or chapter 7, verse 23, and, the, and I'm using a lot of these passages, and I know I'm running through them pretty quickly. Uh, the Bible says, But this thing command I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well with you. You want things to be well with you as a Christian? Obey the word of God. If you obey the word of God, things will be well, which means you will be blessed. And if you get blessings, then you'll become a blessing. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 29, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Why? Because obedience brings blessings. Now, wait a minute, Pastor. These guys were facing imprisonment, they were facing going to jail. They were facing persecutions and, and beatings and probably even crucifixions. And Peter says, we're going to obey God more so than man. Why? Because the blessings of this world are temporal and the blessings of God are eternal. Obedience brings blessings. Now, I made a statement earlier about, about the youth and about kids. Listen to this in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. And we'll take this from the scriptures and we'll break it down to our vernacular, how we understand it. And before I do that, let me ask, especially the world changers, how many of y'all are from the northern states? Anyone? Anyone? All y'all pretty much southerners? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so you'll understand as I break it down to southern vernacular in a moment. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 20. Children... Obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. The Bible also says that, children, when you obey your parents, it will add longevity to your life. Saying that in Southern, in other words, if you don't obey your parents, they'll kill you. Your life is going to be shortened. Right? You ever been disciplined and thought your parents were trying to kill you? They were not trying to kill you. <laughs> Well, that pause in there kind of made it sound bad, didn't it? It's a great thing to obey your parents, to see the smile on their faces. And, and especially as you become teenagers, you may think, well, I've got my own life now and I'm living my own way and my parents live their own things. And you may even become rebellious, even as church kids, even as Christians. And it happens more readily than you think. But let me tell you something. You obey and you honor your, your physical, your biological mom and dad, your earthly parents in a way of honoring your heavenly father. That's why you do it. Not to stay out of trouble. Most people want to obey the law, be obedient to the law to stay out of trouble, not to be blessed. Well, of course, it's a blessing not to get a speeding ticket. It's a blessing not to end up in jail. But friends, by being obedient, by not breaking the laws of the land, by not breaking the commandments of God, we honor our God. We honor our Heavenly Father. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse 19, For as by one man's disobedient, many were made sinners, and by the obedient of one shall many be made righteous. By one man, sin entered into mankind, humanity, and that man is known as Father Adam or Adam. When he disobeyed God, not when Eve disobeyed God, but when Adam disobeyed God as the head of that household, he could have easily stopped it. The Bible entered into man. Man became totally depraved. I think my battery's out. I'll stay right here. So when man became totally depraved from the time of Father Adam all the way to us, we were sinners. We have sin in our life, and that makes us disobedient to the things of God. That's what sin is. As a child, when a child is born, they are considered under the age of grace. They don't know better. They don't know about uh, the consequence of doing wrong and the consequence of sin. They learn that as you grow up. But when you get to that point of the age of understanding where you realize that sin is not only doing wrong and disrespecting my parents, but all sin is disrespectful to my God, 
And when I do that, I am separated from him. And if I don't have come back to him his way through the cross of Calvary and through the love of Jesus Christ, and I am separated from him eternally, I have no hope, and the curse and the wrath of God is rest, would rest upon you. But through one man's obedience, and that one man is known as Jesus Christ, and he's not only man, he was God. And he came to this earth and he walked this earth for 33 and a half years of sinless perfection. Never made a mistake. Never did anything wrong. And went to a cruel cross is what he came to do. And he died on that cross. And when he hung there, he took upon himself my sins and your sins. And he paid a sin debt that I couldn't pay and nor could you pay. And he covers even my past, present, and future sins under his precious blood. So that as I look up to the Heavenly Father, as I've accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, as a sinful man, he looks down through the blood of Christ and sees me as a child of God. Obedience doesn't save you. Accepting Jesus Christ saves you. It's not by works which we are saved, according to Titus. Not by works which we have done, but according to his righteousness, he saves us by the washing and regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Spirit. We are saved when we surrender our life to Jesus Christ and we accept what he did on the cross of Calvary for our sin and we just simply fall in love with him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, there is an avenue of obedience. To that. That's being obedient to the teaching of God's word to be saved. Okay? But being saved and thinking that you can be obedient to be blessed to be saved, it doesn't work that way. You can never be good enough. You can never pay enough. You can never have enough. You cannot be enough to be saved apart from the shed blood of Christ Jesus. But when you are saved, let me tell you, obedience brings blessings. I don't know about you, but when I know that I'm aligned with the Word of God, I feel blessed. I feel touched. I feel close to Him. When you do what you know you ought to do, you feel blessed. Some people, when they go out and they share the gospel of Christ with others and they get saved, they get real ecstatic. Oh, yes, look what I did. Well, you really didn't do anything, but you were obedient to Christ and share the word of God. Most of the time, it doesn't affect me that way. I have this peace that overflows me and just overcompasses me to where I feel like I did what God told me to do. And that's the blessing I get from it. Just that satisfaction that I was in the center of the will of God and I did what God commands us to do through his word. That's the biggest blessing for me. It's not about riches. It's not about possessions. It's about a relationship. And then after that relationship, we become obedient unto him. And through our obedience to him, through his word, the blessings flow. They're not, being obedient is not always easy. Look how tough it was for Abraham to have to take his only son and kill him just because God said so. I can't imagine doing that. I have two daughters and one son, and they're all grown now, but I, as a child or even as an adult, there was no way I would have killed them for anyone else. It just wouldn't happen. And if God asked me to do that, I could be honest with you and transparent. I don't know that I could. I don't. I would hope that I could, but I don't know that I would or could. Matter of fact, I would be pretty sure that if I tried to, my wife would kill me first. If y'all knew her, you would understand that. She's a mean woman. No. <laughs> She's my baby. Are you being obedient to God today? If you feel like you're not being blessed, it could be because you're being disobedient. Disobedient comes in two forms, especially as a believer. It comes in blatantly contradicting or doing things contradictory towards the teaching of God's word. Or it means not doing what you know the word of God tells you to do. Sins of commission, blatantly contrary to the word of God. Sins of omission, neglecting to do what you know you should do. We have world changers with us today, folks. I believe they are being blessed because of their obedience. Coming to this community, strangers, to share their hearts, to share their labors, to minister to folks they've never met before. 
They raise their own support. They, I'm sure that it's out of the comfort zone for many of you. Maybe your first time being in World Changers, difficult. Maybe you've been with World Changers before, makes it easier. But your first time in a strange place with strange people, not saying you're strange, makes it a little bit difficult. But by your obedience after this is said and done, you'll go back and you will be immensely blessed. The same thing holds true for us as believers today. If we're obedient to the teaching of God's word as believers and just the fact and the only reason not to receive but to give honor to him, you'll be blessed for it. And I'll be blessed. This morning, if you're not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I will tell you right now, you can read the Bible, you can preach sermons, you can do whatever you want to do in the name of God, but you really won't be blessed. It'll just be self-satisfaction. Because until you're born again, until you belong to Christ, it's all null and void. It doesn't help you. It's just a feel-good thing. It's not an eternal blessing. But if this morning, if you're not sure that you'd go to heaven if you were to die, I want to encourage you at the invitation to come forward and let us take the word of God and share with you how you can know unequivocally without a doubt that you would spend eternity with Christ in heaven's glory when this life here is over with. And then if that happens in your life, then you will want to be obedient because that's where the blessings come from. Christian, this morning, are you being obedient? Y'all ready? If you're not being obedient, you're being disobedient to the Father. And I don't think any of us would want to be that way. Won't you come and get it right with God? Let us pray.